Hello, everyone. Um, today, I wanted to uh, come to you. This, uh, I'm going to do this a special recording that I'm about to release, right? And the reason why I'm doing a special recording, I'm going to release this recording, is because I, when the, the young man was ask, asking me the questions, you know, uh, in reference to commercial multifamily, I felt as if it was like an interview. And, and so I said, wow, I think this particular recording should be released. So I emailed the young man and I asked him, would it be okay if I release it on YouTube? And he said, sure, it'll be okay. So this here recording, I hope you enjoy it. And I also hope it may answer some questions that you have uh, about commercial multifamily, how to get started and, you know, in that direction. And if you ever have questions for me, feel free to ask. Uh, my contact information will be in the description below. So feel free to ask, all right? So let's go ahead and get started with this uh, video, this recording. Thank you. Hello? Hello, you hear me now? Yeah, okay. Awesome, awesome. What's going on, Mr. Murphy? Hey, I'm okay. What about yourself? I'm okay, man. Thanks for asking. Um, I mean, I don't know how you normally do your uh, Zoom interactions, but is there like a format? Or it's just open ended. How how are we gonna do this? No, you the one that made the appointment, right? Yes, sir. I sure did. Okay. So, so why did you make the appointment? Yeah. So yeah, just briefly, I'm gonna just go over myself. Um. Okay. I'm originally from New York. I moved mm -hmm. to Baltimore to go to Morgan State. I uh, studied accounting, did that. Um, worked a government job. I hated it. Um, then I always had a passion for real estate. I went into that. I left the job uh, and I've been doing real estate full time since 2018. Um, fast forward I, in the midst of that, I got my MBA, too. But fast forward. Um, yeah, man, I'm just looking to, to grow, scale, uh, learn new skills. And I've just always been passionate about um, affordable housing, you know, especially nowadays. Inflation, everything is, is going up, including rent and things like that. So I just want to be in a position where I can learn how to transition from residential to commercial. Um, and with that being said, if if I guess if you were in my position or I, I think I think if I read your bio correctly, you you had a similar story where you transitioned from residential to commercial. But um, if if you could do it all over again, like what are some things that you would probably do differently to get I guess, into the commercial space. Mm. So, before I get into that, um, how did you even hear about me? Oh, yeah, I, I seen that was one of your big questions. I know that's a big, big, important question, especially for, for marketers. Um, so, actually, uh, I was on LinkedIn, and I followed yeah. this uh, gentleman by the name of I think his name is Sita. And um I seen you had him as a guest speaker and he posted the um mm -hmm. the Zoom. So I'm like, oh damn, let me check this out. And yeah, ever since I followed him, I just been going down this like rabbit hole of uh commercial real estate and uh I tapped in um and it was very insightful. But I to be honest with you, I don't know how to like I really want to get in the lives, like, because it was like a recorded. I think you posted the recording on YouTube, and I'm like, how do I um get? You want to you want to join the group? Yeah, 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 absolutely. Okay, so I'll put you on. I'll, I'll do that. I'll put you on the list to uh to get the invitations so that oh, okay. you can come to to the to the meetings. Um, so so um. Uh, so you heard about me on LinkedIn through, didn't I, when you saw the video, 
on YouTube. Did you subscribe to the channel? Yes, sir. I sure did. Yep. Did you? Okay, great. Thank you. Well, thank you very much for that because I need that help. <laughs> oh yeah, of course. I know. Uh, I know. So, um, so you asked if you asked if I had to do it over again, um, how would I get into commercial? Right. Yes, sir. You know, the steps that I took, I wouldn't change it uh, to get into commercial. I probably just wouldn't mess with residential, though. Really? I wouldn't do that at all. Yeah. That's just a waste of time for me. I, that's my opinion. It's a waste of time. If I want to, what I would say to myself, uh, uh, what I would say to that person back then, yo, forget about that residential crap. Just jump straight into a commercial. Mm-hmm. Um, of course, you're just wasting your time, wow. and 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 that's what I would say, because there are two different apples, there are two different fruits, right? Um, residential and commercial. You got apples and oranges, two different type of fruits, and what you do for one, yeah, it, it may be similar in nature, but commercial beast altogether. Right. Mm-hmm. The way we do things, the way we operate, it's nothing like residential at all. So I wouldn't even bother with residential. I wow. would go straight to commercial. Okay. So let me just play Are you the interviewing devil's... me? <laughs> okay, okay. No, nah, it's it's very um interesting because I went to a uh... Uh, it was like a biz now. Um, it was an affordable housing summit in DC, mm-hmm. and I met this black dude. He was, I think his name was Omar Kareem. He was, he was speaking on stage. I was inspired. I went up to him like, "Yo," I asked him the same question. He basically told me the same thing. <laughs> like, so, yeah. so yeah, I keep hearing that a lot. But my rebuttal to to that would be like, okay, I get that makes sense. Um, mm-hmm. but it's like. I don't know if you could like um try to put your mind state into where you was back then, but I feel like residential is more tangible or achievable, and it gives you the confidence, so to speak, to like go from you know. It's, it's, I would say I don't know because I, I haven't made the jump, but I would say it would be a slightly more um easier transition. Oh, it's like you said, it's probably. It's apples and oranges, um, but I think when you get a little bit of success in real estate, um, I think it, it helps helps your confidence um, to achieve more things. So to speak. Well, then but, if that's the case, then go find the units. Then I was gonna <laughs> okay, yeah, I was gonna I was that was actually on my list of questions um, to yeah, ask. So if, if that's how, if that's what you think, although that is a limited belief. Mm. Uh, you're setting limits on yourself. Um, I don't. I don't have. I don't believe in limited beliefs. I don't have any. I believe in achieving and going for whatever I want. Okay. So, if someone said, you know, I, I, I was told early on, go smaller. Don't try to go for the big. Go smaller. That's a limited belief. I believe I should go for what what I want, whatever size I want. If I want a five size, then I go for it. If I want to. 200, I'm going to go for it. I go for what I want. Yeah. Because I'm built that way. My God made me that way. You know, I'm going to tell, tell you the story. I went to a boot camp. So in the boot camp, the teacher, he was saying, everybody has to put a, make a criteria. So everybody made a criteria. So then he went around the room. He asked everybody their criteria. And, you know, everybody had different things, right? 10, 5 to 10, 10 to 15, you know, some had 30 to 50. I had 100 to 200. That's what I had, 100, 200 units, right? So at, so at lunch. Oh, wait, 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 pause. This is before you ever did one commercial deal? That was your criteria? Yeah. Like, you know, yeah. Okay. All right, cool. 
So okay. during lunch, you know, everybody was like, hey, man, don't you think that's a little bit too big? You know, you're just getting started and just that, that, and the other, right? And I said to him, I said, let me tell you something. I believe in God. And there are no limits to my God. That means there are no limits to me. I said, so if you're putting limits on yourself, you're putting limits on your God. That's what I said to him. And my first deal was 208 units. Wow. That's, that's, that means you like, you set yourself for the, for the, for the sky and you got a, to, to space, man. You got above the sky. Wow. That's, that's what's up. Hmm. Don't, um, go for what you want. Put your plans together. Okay. You married? No. You got any kids? Yeah. Okay. When you, of course, you put your plan together, you know, your, your, your children are involved, right? So I don't know. I, I don't know you. I don't know what you're trying to build. I don't know if you're trying to get into this for fix and flip or, you know, legacy hold or whatever. But whatever you do, you, you need to have your family in that plan. And mm. that's going to, that's going to sort of, when you start thinking about your family, what is it that I want for my family? What is it I want for me? Then it's going to come together. You're going to say, in order for me to get to where I need to go, I need this number of units. So then you focus on that. Because now you know what your why is. Why am I doing this? All right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, start with why, for sure. Okay. Yeah. All right. So, um, so I know you mentioned, like, uh, okay, if you want to start, you know, if you got a small limited mindset small belief start with five units but um so like right now i'm very comfortable going like direct to seller right and i know in the commercial game most of the major deals it ain't really direct it's mostly like brokers or bro is that correct like mostly broker relationships and things like that you if you have the uh this the systems it may be easier for you to go direct to seller on the smaller units. Mm -hmm. But when you get up into 100, 200, 300 units, it's not going to be easy. Because the way they're going to structure themselves, you're going to, it's not going to just be one gatekeeper. It's liable to be another gatekeeper and another gatekeeper, but you you may never ever get directly to the owner. Never ever. You gotta mm -hmm. keep climbing. You gotta keep breaking through the through the veils of the corporate structure. The smaller units, a lot of times, they feel like, oh, well, I don't really need to do this. I don't really need to structure it this way. I'm just gonna do this myself. I'm just gonna you know, and I'm just going to incorporate my own self and it, and they wind up doing it. Yeah, they save money. They do. They save money. You say you're going to save money. But you have to, but, but you're also leaving yourself open mm -hmm. to, to liabilities. Because if I walk past a property, uh, let's say you own a, a five unit, a 10 unit, or 20 unit. And I could go and find out who the owner is. Now I got direct access to you, right? But your tenants also have direct access to you. Hmm. So if they fall, if they sue themselves. Yeah, you have insurance, but guess what? This is a litigious society, man. They're going. They could come after your personal stuff, the things you buy for your children, the the food you put on your table. They don't. They don't care about who you are, you know. So, 
So when you start looking at the smaller units, yeah, you can most likely go direct to seller, man. You could probably go direct to owner, I mean, most likely. Mm. Yeah, yeah. I, I was thinking that. Like, I feel like anything under twenty units, because I'm looking to get something value add. So I feel like anything under twenty units, it might be like a mom and pop trying to save money. To, you know, they really structure it properly, and that's probably the same way they run. You know, the building trying to save money, cut corners. Mm -hmm. in. That might be more opportunity. Um, from the outside. Uh, so just. Another question I had was when it came to like um when it comes to like adding value, uh most of the big deals, like I'm sure two hundred and eight units, you have partners on it, right? And they, they play different roles. Um uh, what would you say like which one would you kind of focus on? Would you focus on like the raising money aspect or would it be like the operations or um uh, get finding the deal. Like, what what would you say would be the that I should, one I should focus on? So uh, let's let's clarify the question because I'm not too straight on the question. Are you asking as are you asking as a new investor what should be the first step I take or something like that? If, as, just clarify yeah. that for me. Yeah. So so yeah, as a new investor looking to get into commercial, mm -hmm. um. Which way would you kind of go as far as like whether it's raising money, um, bringing value on like the property management side, or right. you know finding a deal or bringing a deal to someone? Okay, so first thing I would tell you is learn how to underwrite. That's the first thing. Uh, you can find all the deals you want. Yeah, a lot of deals out here. You man, you, you could probably find a deal tomorrow. That's a day. Hey. But if you don't know how to underwrite, that deal means nothing. Mm -hmm. You're you're not getting no capital. Who's going to give you money? You can't even explain the deal. Right? This is one of the differences between commercial and residential. Commercial, this is a business. And Although you're buying an apartment building, you're going to ask for the same exact thing that you would ask for if you went to a grocery store. You're going to say to the, to the owner of the grocery store, I want to see your profit and loss statement. This way I could evaluate what this store is worth if I'm looking to buy. It. Okay, I'm not going to get deep into the rest of that stuff. So all the rest of anything, everything else can put. But you are going to ask for that profit and loss statement. Now, on the commercial side, that's, or we're really on the commercial side, but on the multifamily side, you're going to, you're going to ask that seller for the same exact thing. Hey, I need to see, I, I need that T12, that profit and loss statement, because you need to underwrite that property. You need to know how, how much this property is worth. What am I willing to pay? Where are my numbers? Where do they come in? He's he may be asking twenty million dollars. And when you calculate, when you sit down and calculate the numbers, right? You're looking at the NOI, you're looking at his purchase price, and you're saying, wait a minute. That's a three cap. That doesn't make sense. Right? You know, you want to say, yo, this doesn't make sense, right? But so the uh, the most, uh, uh, to me, everyone has their own opinion. Some some would say raising money. Yeah, but if you don't know how to underwrite, you ain't getting no money anyway. You can, raise, you, you can know how to raise a billion dollars. But when that investor asks you about that underwrite, how did you come up with this? How did you get that? Where did you get this from? How did you get that? And you can't explain it, you ain't getting no money, man. Learn to underwrite. You don't have to be a master, but you should know at least the basics so that you can explain it to the investors. And those investors could be your family, they could be your friends, 
you may even have a deal you want to bring to me and say, hey, say, hey, Dad, will you work with me on this? Because I'm new. I don't know what I'm doing. Will you work with me on this? And I say, sure, man. Let me see your underwrite. And you send it to me and you don't know. How, I say, well, I look at you. Yo, do you know how to underwrite? You say, no, no. See, that, now that takes a whole different turn. But to me, the most important thing is underwriting. That's what the most important thing is. Hmm. Okay. So how how did you learn to underwrite? What did you just kind of like oh well I, did you join a mastermind? Did you um kind of figure it out on your own, read through some books or like I... so what I did, um every single thing that I saw that was concerning underwriting, I was I was listening i was i was there i was reading i was whatever so i took courses on underwriting um i joined other organizations that had that was part of underwriting i i um uh books i, I ordered books that that's printed out for underwriting um and i even asked uh uh an author of a book if he will coach me and he said yeah so even to this date i still my whole focus is the underwriting i'm not focusing on the money part i'll let someone else worry about the money part because as long as i get the as long as I know how to underwrite and I'm underwriting the deal and I know where I got my data from, this, that, that, and the other, I could sit down with you and I could tell you this is why this property is worth this, this is how much, blah, blah, blah. You're either going to say to me one or two things. Yes, here's the money I will invest or no, I just don't want to do it. But you will not say to me, you don't know what you're talking about. That part I know. You can say, no, Dad, right now I just don't really have the money. I can't do it. Or you can say, Dad, I, I have the money. I'm going to send it to you. Give me the information. I want to I be a part of that deal. I've taken the time to learn underwriting, asking questions. Like, a, you know, again, reading books, taking classes, um, and stuff like that. Every, every, single, every single thing that I made that came across my ears that had underwriting attached to it, I was like, what? I'm gone. I want to see what they're talking about. Is it different than what I'm doing? Right? So, yeah, underwriting is very important. Yeah. Well, I figured that. And that was kind of the um, the whole crux of this conversation, too, because I feel like that's the foundation right there, man. But that is. Um, I feel like every uh, every um, everybody that's in commercial, they got their own, like, proprietary pro forma so it's like like should i like come up with my own or i feel like in the beginning i don't i don't know but um uh, so gonna... so if your question going to be who model should i use because i don't know what to crack cut you off and i should not have done that so finish your finish what you were saying because i think you was going to ask me a question yeah, I, I, I was getting there. I was getting there. Okay. Yeah, I was, I was trying to figure out, like, yeah, which, which model should I use or, or yeah, how should I go about? So there are a lot of models that's out here. You're going to find that some models are very basic. Okay. You 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 put in the, the data, and that's that's you know that's it. They they're not. Um, some models are just not capable of going a little deeper in, into the underwriting. Then you're going to get some models that's going to blow your brain out, right? Because it's just that intense. It's just that, right? So what what I would say to you is um, look at all models. See which one best fits you, right? And when you get that one that best fits you at that time, use it, learn it, but don't stop. 
mm-hmm. learning the different models and the different ways that those models are underwriting these deals because all models are different. I'm going to tell you right now, I could send you a rent roll in a T12 and tell you to put it into your model. You put it in and then you, and then I say, I send you a different model. I said, put it into that model. Do you put it into that model? I send you a different model. Put it into that model. You put it, I guarantee you they're going to be different. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay. Then, but it should still come around to at least a basic. It should still be around in that, and 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 around in that area now, because one shouldn't be way out to the left now, mm. right? But then you should you'll see that okay. So they all still run around this here right here, okay. But you got to find out which model um, is best for you, which one that you 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 like that you're more comfortable with, okay. But but uh, again, continue continue to learn other models. And, and you know something? Start, start when you when, when you get comfortable with it. Start playing with it, tinkering. Okay. Suppose if I do this to this, and suppose if I do that, mm. because as you advance, you're going to start seeing what's in some other models. You're going to say, "Y'all yeah, like that," yeah. but it's not in my model. I want that in my model. So now you're going to have to figure out. Now, hold on a minute. How can I do that? into my mind and then you're going to start okay let me see if i do this what's going to happen right so hope that answered your question that did that did and uh last question would you recommend me buying a financial model would like that would be okay right or i mean i don't i don't know i just don't want to feel like somebody taking advantage of me i don't know when it comes to the models um hold on one second sure, sure. when it comes to the models right yeah don't go don't go bonkers man you know like don't go out there spending ten twenty thousand dollars on a model um i would say and, and and i'm going to i'm going to give myself a plug um i would say join a coaching program See, see, I would say join the coaching program and let them uh, help me and teach me about underwriting. Um, you know, you have plenty of people out there that you could join for coaching. I will say, don't put out thousands of dollars. Hmm. Don't do that. Okay. Now, somebody need you to pay $5, 10 15 20000 $20,000. Remember these words right here. Daryl Murphy Sr. said, don't do it. I needed that. I needed that. Right. Okay. Don't, he said, don't do it. Daryl Murphy Sr. said, to come see him, I'll join his coaching program for 200 bucks a month. And I could take my five, ten, fifteen thousand dollars and put it into a deal. Put that money into a deal. Now you're going to learn more. Okay. So I, I'm going to invite you to the commercial multifamily masterminds, the underwriting show, and you you're going to learn a lot. I want you before you put out any money. I want you to learn as much as you can. Go the free route. But there's going to come a time where, yeah, you, you're not going to have a choice. You're going to have to put some money out. But I do not want you to put out thousands of dollars, not unless those thousands, thousands of dollars are going into a deal. And I know I said thousands two times. If it's going, if if you if if I say to you, my coaching program is five thousand dollars. I would expect for you to say, well, what is that five thousand going towards? Someone's that's 
gesture of coaching for you or that just, you know, whatever. Okay. Now, first of all, I don't do this. I don't, I don't, this is just an example. Let me just say that. It's just an example. But I respect for you to ask the question, well, where is that 5,000 going, 10,000, 20,000, 30,000, 40,000? Because you got programs out here, man, they, they, they kick off at $30,000, $40,000. And it goes, it doesn't go into a deal. Okay. Now, so, so start, I'm going to tell you, um, start out, start out on zero, zero. Go get books. Go to YouTube. Now, let me, let me retract that. Start out with zero to ten dollars. Cause mm. Some books are going to cost you probably about nine, ten dollars. Okay, right. all right. So, so I'm gonna say zero to ten. Um, and, and 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 go to um, Udemy.com, YouTube. Um, see what books are out here that's discussing underwriting, so that you can. At at least learn the basic. Okay. And the basic is going to be what is it that I need to underwrite that commercial multifamily property? They're going to tell you what you need. They're going to tell you how I can't, I can't, some of them, I, uh, I think only one, only one book I know, um, comes you you'll get a model with it hmm. okay yeah, I, you know the list of that the title of that book off here it's by robert beersley look for robert beersley okay um you know now now i will say you may run into one situation you may run into with what that is i believe that if i have a question if i'm reading and if I have a question about something in that book, I need to be able to get in contact with that author because I, I want to ask him a question. Yo, you said here, or it is stated here. I'm not going to say use that. I almost like say it, it states in page so and so, so. This is what to do, blah blah blah. And you know, can you please clarify that for me or whatever? And and I expect for the the writer to respond with an answer. So, because because you're going to have a model, you're going to do what it says, but you're going to run into a question, and then you're not, and then you need to talk to someone. You and the person you need to talk to about that particular model is the person who put that model together. That'll be the author. So, so, um, so I'm gonna say go that route. Go to Udemy.com, okay, and sign up for the underwriting courses there. There's, there's, I'm gonna tell you right now, there's a lot of them, um, but I think they all have their pluses and minuses. But um, Justin Kevill is is a really good, um, is a really good uh, uh, teacher or instructor. Uh, Justin Kevill. So I would definitely say. When you go to Udemy.com, you know, um, you could get a, you, I, I would definitely tell you to take the basic one that they have. I think it's called uh, uh, Commercial Multifamily 101. Oh. It, 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 it's the, it's a, it's a basic, it, it's a basic and it takes, he takes you through what you need, what you should be asking for, stuff like that. Um, and he showed you how to input the data into the model. You could download the model. Okay, um, so yeah, I would say start off there, and but you you're going to learn, you're going to learn that there's more than one way of making Kool Aid. All right, there's more than one way to make Kool Aid. So so make sure you keep an open mind. 
and ask a lot of questions. All right. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I feel like you're giving me a long list of resources and uh, I got my work cut out for me. I, I remember, I think you referenced uh, you to me in the, um, I think you said you took a chat GPT course in there too. I, I guess they got a lot of good courses in there. I got to check that out. Yeah. Check out. Yeah. Okay. Chat GPT is, yeah, that's, that's fantastic. That is, that's fantastic. But yeah, I would definitely say check out Udemy.com and and stuff like that. You know, but again, start out start out low. You know, zero. I'm saying zero to twenty bucks, twenty five bucks. Um, Udemy Udemy courses. Sometimes you may go in and see a course for like fifty nine, sixty nine dollars. Um, I would say hold tight. Don't buy the course right then. Keep checking every day. Just keep checking. Keep coming back. Because once you register, they're going to send you an email. Hey, we have an sale on our courses, and then the price dropped to either nineteen dollars or nine dollars. And then, then at that time, what I would tell you to do is sign up for multiple because you're going to get them for cheap before they go back up to fifty nine, sixty nine, seventy nine bucks. Okay, that's a hack right there. I like that. I like that loophole. Okay. And and through Udemy, you can ask questions to that instructor and they will respond back within 24, 48 hours. Awesome. And come and come to the mastermind. Um, you know, you, you have you know, you have my email now, so uh you could contact me and stuff like that, you know. Perfect, perfect. So what, Um, would you be able to put me on a list or send me an invitation for it? For the mastermind? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, don't worry, put you on this you know, after we get off of here. So uh, I add you to our, to our email list. Perfect. All right, Darrell, hey brother, I appreciate your time. Um. I know you're a busy man, so definitely thanks for taking the time out to uh, point me in the right direction. Uh, give me a wealth of resources, and, and <laughs> you're free ninety nine right now. So, um, yeah. yeah, that's good. That's good. So, so I figured you was interviewing me, yeah. <laughs> oh, that's the vibe I gave. I mean, I'm just curious, man. I got a lot of questions. Yeah. Lot that's of questions. good. That's good. Don't you know? Don't be a stranger. You sure. know. If you have any other questions, feel free to you know email me or or you know set up another Zoom call. I'll be more talk with you. more than happy to talk with you. Hopefully next time, man, I'm gonna bring some value. Hopefully I I got a deal. I'm under.